Well, hey, YouTubers out there in YouTube land across the world and around the country. Har, har, har. Good evening. What follows that morning? Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, uh, I had a long, hard day. I've had three really hard, rough, weird days I have not recuperated. And I'm about ready to, I, I, as they say, hit the wall. Hit the wall. I hit the wall. So good night. I might get up later, but I doubt it. <laughs> Sorry, country man. I have to get some ice cream instead of listening to me read. Sorry. All right. Um, about it. I have some really awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Oh, my gosh. The synchronicities, the, uh, wow. Do your own research. Bring your own research to this party if you're interested, if you have time. Um, I have three sons. The oldest one is named Ian Edwards. He was named after Jonathan Edwards. Okay. Ian is, you know, English form of John, Jan, Jan, I-A-N. Norwegian, you'd be John, Jan, J-A-N, Jan, John. All right, plenty show. My second son is named David Brainerd Diamond. David Brainerd was a missionary in the 1700s, early 1700s. He never rode more than 100 miles from his house. He... Uh, Died at the age of 29, tuberculosis. He is responsible for the entire missionary movement of the next century. William Carey, Adoniram Judson, Henry, Henry Martin, Robert Murray McShane, and all the other people's. Okay, fact. He would have married a girl named Jerusha. Her name was Jerusha Edwards. Oddly enough, the same year that David Brainerd died, his sister, Jerusha, died. Jerusha Brainerd. Popular name back then. I never knew this last next part, but John... He was dying of tuberculosis, and Jonathan Edwards' daughter, who was 17 years old, nursemaided him, went with him on a trip to Boston, and that's where he almost died, and then he, she managed to get him back home. They never married, but I never knew this. I'm glad I'm not sitting at the table. I'm just going to try to get this out there. <laughs> I never knew this. She nursemaided him, caught consumption, tuberculosis from him, and died just a few months later, and they're buried side by side. So, my third son is Isaac Watts. Watch videos on research on Psalm 94. Listen to Sons of Korah on Psalm 94. This is going to happen. Judgment's about to come down. Okay? They say you don't see, see, see. They say you don't care, care, care. It's about to happen, folks. The rich are going to weep and howl. And there's rich people who are consider themselves to be Christians who are going to weep and howl because they have oppressed Poor. So, get a clue. If you're rich, knock it off. I mean, don't don't be oppressing people. Don't be stealing from people. A lot of it's happening down there in Arkansas. I am sickened by the bullshit I'm hearing. Utter, horrid, disgusting things. 
All right. So, yeah. Jonathan Edwards, David Brainerd, and Isaac Watts. And Isaac Watts has two a fabulous song based on Psalm 94. So read, get the, pull up the lyrics on that. If you don't do it by the time I get around to doing the video, I'll, I'll do it. Very interesting stuff. Fascinating. It's, it's a warning. You know, it's time to warn people. Judgment's coming. Tower of Siloam is going to fall and the just are going to die with the unjust. Get off the coast. Get out of the, get away from the borders. Some people are doing that. Margo came from New York, East Coast, the right coast. And several people are in the process of either already there or coming from the left coast, the west coast, the leftist coast. So, bring your stuff, come on out and help. You know, leave your, get a shovel and dig a hole and leave your shit there. Don't bring your shit here. Your theological shit, bury it there. If you get here and you still have it, dig a hole and bury it here. Get rid of it. People have too much shit. All right. You can see I'm just feeling peachy king right now, so. I just about passed out or fell out of the chair. And if, I, if nobody else is going to stand up to the plate, step up to the plate and go help Margo, I'm going to go do it. But I ain't in any shape to do it, but I will. I don't see any reason why Ron or Sue can't get her a car, get it over there. She needs to rent a car, get to Branson, find an apartment or something, or find just find a place to stay, a place to live. So I uh, appreciate everybody's prayers and thoughts and, you know, support here and there. This is what we need to do. We need to help people that need help, and she needs help right now. And damn it, she better get help. If she don't do it, if she don't get help, I'll go do it. But there's no reason, for, I mean, you know. I just sent Ron in for tonight, and I'm hoping he can do something do something to help her. I'm assuming Sue's already there. I don't even know. She left days ago. Well, was going to leave days ago last time I talked to her. No itinerary updates like we got from Margo. Anyway, pull it together, people. Nothing you own is yours. You got gold? Might as well just throw it away. It ain't never going to do you no good. Throw it out in the streets. The only thing it's good for is... Like I said, this in a text or something or an email or whatever the heck it was. I said, you know, if you got gold and you're oppressing people, you might as well just throw it away. Because all it's, all it's going to be used for is paving the streets of heaven and you're never going to walk on them. If you have gold and you're oppressing your brother, fucking forget it. You know. I was hungry. And you didn't feed me. And I have done that. I've been there. I was thirsty, not even offered a glass of water. I was homeless, you didn't give me no shelter. I was sick, you didn't help me out. You're going to hear that. People are the image of God, the image of Yahweh. And if you did not help people that needed help, you did that to Messiah, to the person you claim is your savior. If you've screwed somebody over, if you hired them to do something and you didn't pay them, you are a cheat and a liar and a thief. And you will pay. So there you go. All right, this is Jerry Diamond, How to Get Out of Babylon. You listen to this. You are the remnant. But some of you watch my videos, but you ain't listening to nothing I'm saying, and that's really damn sad. So, there you go. Stick it in your pipe or whatever you do and smoke it. You're blowing smoke up people's asses. You say you love Jesus, love Yeshua, and you cheat and brother, your brethren. You do not have the love of God in your heart. All right. There you go. Good night. Sorry. I'm just speaking truth. I'm speaking truth. I'm sick of bullshit. I've been sick of bullshit for a whole lot of years. and I've been putting everything I have, my heart, my life, my soul, everything I own, everything I have, everything. 
into seeing the kingdom of God built up. Jonathan David Brown, oh my word. On right, right in this last night, do some research. He died on my birthday. I had just had occasion to talk to him because he had been screwed by the same people that screwed me. So I had reached out to him. He had been excommunicated by the same son of a bitch that excommunicated me and came in between my family and my, my between me and my children, interposed their asinine, non-biblical, no biblical support for nothing, selfish, godless, money-grabbing, money-grubbing cult false doctrines controlled by one person interposed between me and my children. Yeah. And I found out that the sorry son of a bitch still has a website up supposedly selling Jonathan David Brown's CD. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm sure they don't have a single copy of it. I knew that if that guy showed up at Jonathan's funeral at Dogwood, Missouri, officiated by Michael Peebles, Pastor Michael Peebles, that he would have been struck dead. Jonathan would have gotten up out of the coffin and, you know, <laughs> take a, a sword, a Bible or something, and, and he would have been dead. Dead. I, that's the way I felt. Uh, I thought, there's no way, there's no way he would be stupid enough to show up here. Because Jonathan prayed imprecatory prayers against the whole organization, Sons Group. And I'm here to tell you, I never wanted to even go to one of them, but I did. And I ended up getting excommunicated by the same Sons of Bitches. So, anyway, personal stuff. And, you know, it's a, right now, it's, it's yes, it's water under the bridge, but I still have, as a watchman, see people saying, you can't say that and you can't judge people, blah, blah, blah. I'm just telling you what the Bible says, and I'm here to tell you that judgment's coming. And if you're screwing people, if you're cheating people, if you're stealing, you are a thief and you're a liar, and you need to get your shit together and you need to straighten up, or you're going to die in your sins, and you're not going to walk on the streets of gold. You're not going to have any gold when you die. You're not taking your gold with you to the grave. You might as well put it to use for the kingdom right now. Start right now. Okay, so anyway, yeah, nutty stuff. I mean, I, I was absolutely stunned. I was just blown away by some of the stuff I found out, um, you know, with Jonathan and stuff. But yeah, Jonathan was a man of God. If you don't know, if you don't know who he is, I mean, it's really easy to look up. Just put JDB. J, that's how you get JDB. Well, I put in Sinners of Hands and Anger God, but, you know, his, his CD. But uh, Jonathan David Brown, he was the producer for Petra's. Meg, Christian mega group, uh, first five albums, all platinum. He was a perfectionist. He was a godly man. He was a theologian. He was a, a linguist. He was a musician, par excellence musician. Absolutely a, a amazing person in every way. And he just, I can't stand up about him. He was just a. Uh... And the funny thing was, his, this was, you know, he really liked me or for whatever reason, but he called me Uncle Jerry. You know, kind of, you know, I guess he wanted my, I don't know his kids to like me or something, I, I don't know. And I kind of wanted to ask, you know, his wife, Rachel, at the funeral, but I didn't. Why did he call me Uncle Jerry? You know, but come to find out, he was 